Alright guys, welcome back to a, another episode of Impact Pro Wrestling. We're finally up on for glory. And you know, in the last episode I discussed how we were going to have a really different timeline than Impact in real life. And that was going to be because we were going to build around the Rascals and Kylie Ray and Daniel Perrazzo and Chris Bay and all those kind of people. Uh, but really, we're actually going to have a really different uh, timeline than Impact Wrestling because they're linked up with AEW. So, you know, they're, you know... How am I supposed to fantasy book Impact Wrestling when they're doing stuff like that, working with Kenny Omega? But, uh, yeah, I think our run for real still be very, very good. Um, there was one issue we did come across, though, as, um, what screen is it on this one? Yeah, we have a couple absent workers, including Alex Shelley and Ethan Page, who are both in our multi-man tag team match. So when we get into the card, I'll explain to you what we're going to do about that. And then, of course, we're missing Dago and Matt Striker. Much like not much of a miss. Dago was going to be on the pre-show tonight, but we've been able to work around that because it's the pre-show. Uh, but yeah, we'll get into the card anyway. And of course, we open up with a 45, a multi-man match featuring Hernandez, uh, Heath and Rhino against Jit Chris and Reno Scum. Heath picks up the win after he pins Thornstow with an E-minor in pretty much 10 minutes. Um, Rhino's the best in the match with a 51, Heath a 47. Everybody else is sort of a bit lower. Jake Chris not bad with a 42, but again, it's pre-show, not much to say about it. We are in front of a thousand people at the center stage arena tonight, or center stage theater. Uh, 39, not as good for the women as um, in a pre-show bout that had decent reaction from the crowd, but subpar wrestling. Ty Valkyrie and Rosemary win after Rosemary uh, gets the pinfall in the final. I didn't realize it was elimination, but Rosemary is the person who gets the, the big win in this match in 10 minutes. 39, not amazing, not awful. Havoc again with a 40. She's up there with Rosemary at 45 and Taya Valkyrie at 42. Two women, of course, Taya and Rosemary, who we should be getting back in the Impact title scene at some point. Of course, both former Knockout Champions. And then a 43 to close the pre-show. Brian Myers teams up with the Rascals against the Desi Hit Squad. And he gets the pinfall over Raj Singh after a heat-seeking elbow in 8 minutes. 44 for Wentz, 47 for Dez, 42 for Myers, 40 for Raju, and a 29 and a 28 for Singh and Shira. So not amazing. Um, but, you know, it was a way to get the Rascals and Brian Myers on TV. Of course, Brian Myers still undefeated. Then we open up, and you can tell, ladies and gentlemen, that it is going to be a good show tonight, as I've remembered to actually put Josh Matthews in instead of Josh Alexander. And they just mentioned that um, the Fatal 4-Way Tag Team match has become a Fatal 4-Way match, and on Impact next week, we'll have a main event of that Fatal 4-Way Tag Team match. And they also hype up the main event a little bit, but not too much. 41, not bad. I do think it is actually better with Josh Matthews in, thankfully rather than Josh Alexander. Then we have a little, I guess, a tale of the tape, I've labeled it. You know, rounding out some of their accomplishments in Impact Wrestling. All that kind of stuff. Um, lacked anything interesting going on, uh, which is unfortunate, but a 30's not bad before this match. Then, so, a big match. Uh, 50 rating is actually very good. As um, Chris Bay is able to defeat Trey, they go all out as well. 13 minutes 45 seconds but there's a lot going on in the match um, so during the match when it's heating up a uh, swinger will start to get involved and then the rascals will come back out and chase um, off Johnny Swinger and while there's a you know Chris Bay and Trey there's a ref bump and um, as Trey is looking to capitalize on a fallen Chris Bay a man slides into the ring got a mask on you can't see who he is he hits his finish on Trey uh, Chris Bay rolls, crawls in the ref wakes up pins Trey the man on masks and we'll find out who that is in the next segment if you haven't already seen it down there Chris Bay got a 46 Trey a 51 so Trey is you know a future title holder in Impact Wrestling we're just there's a lot more to go through before we get there and the man who was masked was Leo Rush. We previously talked about it. Uh, Leo Rush stands tall with our Impact 
X Division champion Chris Bay as they stand over Trey Miguel. Uh, I think Leo Rush with Chris Bay could be a very good thing. You know, it leads into what what happens on Impact on Tuesday night. Um, is Trey going to be annoyed that the Rascals weren't there? Is Johnny Swinger still involved with Chris Bay and Leo Rush? You know, where do we go from here? Will Trey get another match? We'll have to find out on Tuesday. Then we have uh, Tenille Dashwood with Melissa Santos in a 27 as she accepts Kelly Ray's challenge for later on tonight. Just a quick wee segment just to, you know, tie their match up completely and make sure we know what's happening. 43, Ace Austin cuts a bit of a promo, uh, but he's furious about how, you know, Alex Shelley and Ethan Page are, have other commitments, how they're somewhere else tonight, and how no one in Impact, meaning myself, um, even thought to check the calendar and make sure we had all the talent here. Um, but tonight, you know, he's going to go out again and prove that he is the best wrestler in Impact Wrestling. His performance was good. You're at the crowd well. 43, not bad. The match is a 53, so the best match so far. As Chris Saban, Carl Anderson, Ace Austin, and Josh Alexander have a match. I mean, how could it not be a good match with those four individuals? Carl Anderson pins Josh Alexander with a spine buster. Um... Everybody got sort of around the same. Austin with a 53 at the top and Alexander with a 49. But, you know, top, top uh, competition here. Austin would be better out without Fulton. Uh, apparently they don't work together. That's unfortunate. I don't think that's always been showing up. But, um, there's no way we're separating them anytime soon. So, apologies also if you just heard me hit my mic there. Uh, next segment, hype video, just, you know, recovering all of the stuff that we've done with uh, Kylie Ray and Tenille Dashwood, covering how uh, Tenille was able to manipulate Kylie, even split her a little bit from Susie, and then, you know, Kylie came to her senses. 25, not bad. I think this match will be a little bit lower than what we've previously been having tonight, but either way, you know, I think we're going to have a good show tonight. 43, actually pretty good. Uh, 44 from Tio Dashwood, 35 from Kylie Ray. Uh, the Kylie Ray, of course, defeats Tio Dashwood in 9:37 with a super kick. Of course, you know, you've got to have Kylie get that um, win back, that momentum back. She's got to show Tio Dashwood that she can't be messed with. As we slowly continue Kylie Ray on that trajectory of like, you know, uh, moving her from being so naive at the start to being able to stand up for herself to being able to, you know, push through and she's beaten Tio Dashwood tonight. In at Bound for Glory in a big match. 31. As uh, Susie comes back out to celebrate with Kylie Ray. Um, you know, the two are very good friends again. They celebrate tonight. Uh, they can celebrate Kylie's big victory. Uh, then we have RVD making his way down to the ring in a 58. Very good rating. Maybe we should push RVD into a title scene. But the problem is, RVD's matches can be very long, as you'll see in a minute. Um... But of course, he comes down to the ring with Kitty Forbes, of course. Um, I imagine uh, she's got some kind of comically uh, big neck brace on from being pile drivered by Sammy Callahan. You know the kind, like she's still in all of her normal all her normal gear she wears, but she's just got this comically big um, neck brace, so her head sort of almost sticks out of it a little bit. Um, and hopefully, this match will be good. Um, Sixty-one. I think that's the best match in our history, actually. Um, as they had a wild brawl hardcore match that could only go 10 minutes because RVD doesn't have the stamina apparently. Uh, 55 for Sammy Callahan, 56 for Rob Van Dam as Callahan defeats RVD with a lariat. Um, a really good match actually. Did not think <laughs> this is definitely going to be the best match on our card, which is slightly unfortunate. Um, because I don't know if we can uh, beat that. And it's in the middle of the card as well. But I didn't think it would get this good. But of course, you know, maybe the trajectory of these two men after this feud will have them feud with some higher up people up the card again. 31, Diana Prazo, Jordan Grace, Hype Package is covering up all of their feud from pre when we started this series to now. Uh, and covering the fact that if Jordan Grace does not win tonight against Diana Prazo, she will not be able to compete for the impact. Not quite championship. Which I guess this is a case where um I'll talk about it more in the next episode where I ramble through all of my booking ideas. But this would be a good a good point if we had AEW as partners. So Jordan Grace, imagine theoretically in real life, if she loses the kind of match, she could just go and appear on AEW for a while until Impact could bring her back. Whereas I don't know what I'm gonna do with her. 
too much for the next sort of couple of months while Dono Perazzo is still Knockout's champion. And of course in a 44 rated match, in a decent match, Dono Perazzo defeats Jordan Grace in 11.37 by pinfall as Dono Perazzo makes defense number two. We couldn't really, um, apparently they don't click, um, but I didn't really want to have Jordan Grace tap out because I'm not going to have her tap out and give up the opportunity to compete for the Knockout's championship for a long time. So she had to, you know, the match we went on a long time, there was a lot of Fujiwara on bars, and she wore her down and wore her down until she eventually pinned her. Uh, they both got a 41, same rating. Am I right in thinking that Roseberry and um, Ty Valkyrie's ratings are actually better than that? But then again, these two don't click, so you can't really compare, I guess. Um, but that was a, a decent match, a decent match. And then next up, we just have the celebration of, um, you know, Jennifer Prazo's celebrating her glorious victory at Bound for Glory. And, um, you know, you probably get a good pan onto Jordan Grace, who is just defeated, she is distraught, she is devastated about the fact that she has, you know, given up essentially the opportunity to compete for the Knockouts Championship. 39, not a bad segment. Then we roll into the hype package for Eric Young and Rich Swan. I don't imagine it like the other ones. I imagine it almost like, kind of like, on the back of two interviews, um, they're asking them different questions about what the feud means to them. You're getting very different answers, um, as like different bits f of their feud flash up in the background, kind of uh, style. Thirty-one though, not. I was hoping for better actually, but we'll see how the match goes. Forty-eight, not great again. Um, yeah, there is also no way to let the game know the rich swan can only use one hand. Um, but you know, imagine the match. You know. Eric Young comes down to the ring, cocky, confident. Rich Swan comes down. The referee then has to tie one hand behind his back. You know, Eric continues to be cocky. He continues to sort of almost taunt Rich Swan while the match goes on. He's in control, you know. Rich Swan does obviously get a hot comeback, but at the end of the day, he's fighting with one hand tied behind, uh, tied behind his back against the man who has previously won the Impact World Heavyweight Championship. Or I guess it would be the TNA one because he hasn't won the Impact World Heavyweight Championship in our save. Uh, EY then defeats Rich Swan in 1624, wheelbarrow neckbreaker. Um, a good match. I was actually hoping for a little bit better, considering these are two men who, again, sort of like RVD and, and uh, Sammy Callahan, you would like to think after all these feuds are done, they would be, you know, main event caliber talent and people you could probably push into different title scenes. And then, you know, Eric Young stands tall, Willie Matt comes and collects a broken Rich Swan. Because, you know, he's had to fight a, a man for 16 minutes with a hand tied behind his back. Not just any man, a psychopath. So he's taking his beating. He's taking his lumps. And then we will move into the hype for the main event. As we have played the hype package of 43. Main event hype, Eddie Edwards versus EC3 versus Moose. How will this do? There's three segment beforehand. 36, not great. Um... Probably shouldn't have done the star power one, but Eddie comes out with his Impact World Heavyweight Championship for the main event of Burn for Glory, again in front of 1,050 people. How will the match do? Hopefully it will be good. I don't think it will be better than RVD Sammy Callahan now. 59, it was close. It was close. In a bout that had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd, EC3 defeated Eddie Edwards and Moose in 1819 when EC3 pinned Moose. Uh, we'll actually have him pin Eddie. He'll not pin Moose, we'll have him pin Eddie. Uh, with a sweet meat sizzler, can I correct that? No, I can't. Uh, as EC3 wins the Impact World Heavyweight title. Yeah, so um, the match is, you know, it's a typical triple threat. There's a lot going on. Uh, but EC3 is able to hit the sweet meat sizzler on Eddie Edwards and pin him for the victory. In a 59 rated match, pretty good. Eddie got a 60. Moose a 50. EC3 nice in the middle there, 55. And yeah, I'm happy with, I think... Had EC3 been willing to stay around with Impact, I think it would have made sense for them to put the belt on him. Eddie's been a very good, I guess, transitional champion in this case. You know, he's Mr. Impact. He's a very good professional wrestler. But we're going to put the belt on EC3 because a lot of people are excited about him coming back and are still quite excited about what he does in pro wrestling at the minute. And then show closes with a 52 as EC3 stands over a broken Eddie Edwards and Moose to, as a bound for glory fades to black. And the show got a 57, pretty good, increases our popularity in 56 regions. 
So yeah, I feel pretty good about Burn for Glory here. Um, what do you guys think? New signing Leo Rush, I think. He would bring eyes to Impact Wrestling, not on the same level as when the guns returned or when Carl Anderson Duck Gallows appeared, or even AC3. But you know, he's a good, exciting talent. His partnership with Chris Bay is interesting. Uh, I'm looking to explore that. Um, of course, we had Kylie Ray sort of take that next step and defeat to Neil Dashwood. Um, we had Jordan Grace losing the opportunity to compete with uh, Dana Prado for the Impact Knockout title. Uh, where will she go from this? Obviously, we don't have that link with AEW, so it's not like she can just cross over shows. We don't have the tag titles, which is something I'm going to talk about more in the next episode as well. Uh, let me know if you think we should bring those in, maybe. Um, EY defeats Rich Swan. Is this them done? Will there be more to their feud to unload? And of course, a new Impact World Heavyweight Champion, EC3, defeating Eddie Edwards and Moose. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Um, I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you very much. Cheers.